The small towns in Texas that sit between Austin and Houston are often overlooked by travelers, but we've discovered a few that are worth a visit. They have the country charm, history, and friendliness that you would expect, but you might be surprised by the sophisticated boutique shopping, restaurant choices, and area events that are offered. This week, we'll show you why we've returned to Belleville and Brenham, Texas, northwest of Houston. On this episode of Roman with Rosie. get used to that for the next week and a half. The first thing you got to know about Belleville, Texas is that it's kind of a train town. The town really started to grow when the Santa Fe Railroad arrived in 1880, providing a way to market for agricultural goods and passenger transportation to Houston. They used to have a big switching yard and a roundhouse with a turntable here, but that, along with the train station, are history. If you're fascinated by trains, you'll love the city's Clark Park RV campground because you'll have a front row seat to several each day. When we last visited two years ago, most of the trains were either hauling oil or returning empty to fill up with oil, as they've been doing for decades. But in 2024, there's a notable difference. More than half were hauling cargo, specifically Amazon containers. The park is 28 acres of beautiful wooded rolling hills. Rates vary for camping. There are discounts for residents and seniors. At the time we were there, we paid $15 a night. One of my favorite things about it is getting my daily steps in. Watching the various colorful birds or the trains is entertaining as I walk and every weekday groundskeepers are out grooming the fields and taking care of the park. Most of the time we're the only ones camping there. Locals come in to watch baseball games and they're always surprised to see campers here and used to parking in those campsites. Look at that bird. Oh my goodness, look up there. There it is. There's also a catch and release pond to fish in, as well as some really nice playground equipment for kids. What's there to do in Belleville? Well, it's a small city. It boasts both cute and sophisticated boutique shopping in the original buildings on the main plaza that was laid out in 1846. I always manage to find something I can't do without. You'll also find antique shops and home decor shops and a few really very good restaurants. Belleville hosts several events worth being here for. This time we were in time for a great farmer's market with farm fresh foods as well as beautiful and unique handmade items. We were here in 2022 and we managed to catch the classic car stampede. If you're camped at Clark Park during the event, be prepared to be woken up to something like we did. Now we realize we've become classics ourselves and we thoroughly enjoyed reminiscing about cars we've owned through the years. But I was not prepared when the first car we stopped to look at, a Chevy Vega, my first car, is now classified officially as an antique auto by the state of Texas.
Branham, Texas is 15 miles from Belleville and halfway between Houston and Austin. It's both historical and very cool. Brenham is the home of the Bluebell Creamery, and who wouldn't want to visit an ice cream factory and watch how it's made? We're here at the Bluebell Creamery in Brenham, Texas. We were here about 12 years ago. Our son was still young enough to travel with us and stuff. Ice cream was free then. We get these cups. It's only a dollar. You get one of these or you can get one of their treats for a dollar. But they have some flavors here that you can't buy in the store. So I got the, um, what was it again called? Happy Tracks. Happy Tracks has peanut butter cups. So it says it's only sold in um, restaurants and stuff. You can't buy it in the store. So I thought I'd try that. And they have a flavor called Dr. Pepper Float. I thought it was actually going to be a float, but it isn't. It's actually the ice cream. It tastes like Dr. Pepper. It's really good. So we wanted to show you the observation deck where we could watch them packaging. They were doing cookies and cream today down in the factory, but there's no photos of any kind allowed there, and they have somebody monitoring, so we couldn't take pictures. But pretty cool operation. It's not actually cold in the room where they packaged all the ice cream. They said it was about 65 degrees because it's all in like a milkshake state while they have it go into the cartons and everything. Pretty interesting to watch. You get a free paper Bluebell hat to complete the experience. While you're there, stop into the Bluebell Country Store where you can pick up cute reminders of how much you love Bluebell ice cream. The Visitor Center houses a museum that features the history of the company with some actual machinery originally used in the process. At this point in the day, we were focused on two things. Some of the fantastic public art that has taken hold in Brenham and barbecue. Barbecue was gonna come first as it was time to eat. Since we had Dexter, we were looking for a good takeout. We did our due diligence on Google and came up with LJ's Barbecue. They have rave reviews. Their website tells you that they're open at 11 a.m. until sold out or 6 p.m., whichever comes first. On this day, sold out came first. There was none of that delicious brisket to be had by 2 p.m. Which turned out to be good luck because next on our list was Nathan's. As we approached this gas station and realized the restaurant was attached, we had a deja vu. Well, I guess not actually because the memory was real. This was where we had come 10 years ago as it was highly recommended by Jamie's brother. Nathan's, as in Nathan Winkleman, the big daddy of Texas barbecue, he claims he's been cooking up some of the best true pit barbecue in the state since he was knee high in his grandma's kitchen. You can order your queue through the convenience store attached to the gas station, or you can park in the back and that's where you'll actually find Nathan's main entrance. He started selling his queue 40 years ago with a takeout plate barbecue business in a tiny convenience store in Brenham. Today, Nathan seats up to 100 in-house, 40 on the patio, and caters events throughout South Central Texas. It did not disappoint again, and it was perfect for dining on the patio with Dexter. Good? Brenham's Downtown manages to keep locals and visitors coming with an array of fun events throughout the year. I've included a link in the description so you can plan your visit. The original historical buildings that make up this part of town now house the many specialty shops, boutiques, and excellent restaurants and bars, some of which have been in business since almost the beginning. Besides historical buildings still in use today, great food, music, and wildflowers, Brenham is also a destination for public art. This area is becoming known for having beautiful and thought-provoking works of art in the form of murals. Around many corners, tucked into alleyways, and on towering brick walls, you'll discover giant murals that adorn these historic buildings. Each year, they put on the Texas Arts and Music Festival, 
two to three world-renowned and or community muralists are invited to create their art on the sides of buildings in downtown during the festival. Our inspiration for going to Texas again this spring was the same one that brought 1.1 million others here on April 8th, the 2024 Great American Eclipse. It would be the last total solar eclipse visible from the contiguous United States until 2044. Texas was chosen by many as prime viewing because of the normally clear skies at that time of year. It was about 75 miles from Belleville to where some of my family were gathering east of Austin. When you travel as much as we do, 75 miles isn't bad to be able to see family. But we knew we would lose a bit of the totality because this was still an hour east of that line. We headed that way hoping the clouds would clear. So we are an hour and a half before the start of the eclipse. And the sky started to clear, but we stopped at this viewpoint, and that sure looks like rain. Solar Eclipse 2024. Austin, Texas. It is darker. And yeah, thick clouds on top of it being covered. It's getting darker. I know you can't see it. It's through the clouds. Every so often we can see it. So that's what we're seeing of the eclipse. But that's through clouds. Okay, eclipse 2024 in Texas. We've got the family and new family and friends and Jamie, who thought he didn't care, but now he does. <laughs> it is so cool. We just watched it get dark by the second. It's dark enough to look with your eyes right now. The internet makes it so much easier to discover small town America. These days you can discover excellent restaurants, local arts and culture, and often a lot more open space that reflects the true identity of an area. And the RV lifestyle is a perfect way to experience it. On our next episode, we discovered Tomball, Texas, another small town on the outskirts of Houston where they serve up free full hookup camping for RVers and other full-time campers. We'll also be visiting Space Center Houston, which is another destination checked off of our bucket list. Thanks for hanging out till the end. And if you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and give that thumbs up a click because that way it'll help other people find this video. And we'd really love it if you'd share it with your friends and family if you found this video helpful. And if you're not yet a subscriber, make sure and hit that button down below. And ring that bell because that way you'll be notified every time we upload something. And make sure to leave a comment. That way you <laughs> could be part of the conversation. Until next time. We'll see you. See ya. ya.